us is love. He won't let you down. Cause I know Jesus Deep down in my soul In my heart I know It's love Yeah, love Yeah, love yeah. What y'all know about the Commodores and Lionel Richie on this? You know, this Jesus Love, one of their little all-time greatest hits when the Commodores was on fire. Of course, led by Lionel Richie. The icon Lionel Richie went on to sing Dancing on the Ceiling Sailor, Sailor yeah, Lionel Richie. Do it to me one more time. Good morning, Mary Max. You're the first uh, member to show up for the Sunday morning worship. I didn't put a title on there. I didn't put I didn't put a title because, you know, it's Memorial Day weekend. I'm not going to be specific with y'all, so I'm just going to share stuff. E. Donaldson, good morning. And uh, I put my shades on because, you know, this Texas weather, the sun is out early. I said, damn, the sun must go jogging too. It don't make no damn sense. Which is fine. I'll take it. And so, so, a lot of stuff been going on this weekend. After this Memorial Day weekend, we're going to move on to another subject. That's my thoughts. And, and uh, I guess we're going to barbecue and, and uh, remember those fallen soldiers of all the past wars and you know go visit some graves of some relatives today y'all go ahead and do that i think this is the weekend to do it i guess when it really is really really considered special to do so go ahead go visit your the loved ones who passed away who fallen who fought in some of these wars and uh and also in this memorial day weekend yeah let's remember what family was what family is like so it's kind of remixed. Y'all know this is Sunday morning worship, so y'all get ready. Y'all know I'm about to go there. Uh, Cause I haven't had a Sunday morning worship in a minute. I don't have to, well, I, Mary Max asks if I have water. I don't need water, I'm just walking slowly. I'm not doing any running. I'm just walking and talking today. But when I get my run, I'll definitely have my water. Uh, I drank some before I left the house, so I'll, I'll be what's called about a 30 minute camel. I'll hold it in my, hopefully it'll, it'll be storage, store, uh, stored in my hump until I can walk back to the house. So, but uh, yes, this is uh, just one of the uh, latest installment of Sunday morning worship, oh glory. Come on, let the church doors open to receive those of you who will be parishioners this morning. Amen. And uh, a lot of topics have been coming up all this week. You know, you got the shootings this past week, the shootings and debates going on. And, and uh, Mary Max, I got you the tweet that Nina Turner put out that said, dang, we're so busy talking about this other stuff, but we just totally forgot about the Buffalo shooting. And it appears that we have moved on from... 10 people, 11 people tragically being purposely sought out to be murdered. The murderer driving 200 miles away from his suburban neighborhood to come to the black neighborhood to shoot up Negroes. We, should like, we, we tend to do that for some reason. And I'm telling you, that, that really needs to be examined. How we just move on. Something happened to black folks. I mean, tragic. But we've become, we've become made made to be so numb to our own trauma and, and torture and pain. It's almost it's almost some S and M kind of shit on this. Satan masochism kind of shit. You know. It's like we're like we're the masochists. The sadist is the one who applies the pressure, applies the pain. And we just the masochists like 
please, can I have some more? It's like what we tell white society, what we tell society to keep beating us, keep shooting us as if it, I don't know, like it's a sexual turn on for the black America to be beaten on and shot up and discriminated against and uh, shot unarmed and looked past as far as laws that protect us. It's like, it's an s and kind of relationship we have with the white, with racism. And then we have those with the s and M to say this masochism going on in our minds as black people in this country. We have what's called the Stockholm Syndrome. So, it's almost, it's almost as if we, we take the flogging, we take the whip, then we get on the paddle, take the paddle from the sadist hand and start paddling our own ass. It's, it's, and, and, and we seem to get off on it. It's almost like in Stockholm that we we fall in love with the with the torturer, the traumatizer. We just yeah, we almost start blaming ourselves for our own damn. You know, the scholars wrote about this back in the day. This behavior. It's nothing do but we just act as if we just landed on planet earth we just landed in america good morning tino <laughs> yeah don't cut the yard man give it that nice edge up it's almost like you know it's the weirdest but it's the weirdest relationship that black americans foundation black americans has with, with america it can really work for us but we're still acting like we, we we're meant well physically in prison, but we're actually mentally in prison. We're not really getting the best out of the country like we should be. We have all the all the tools, all the equipment. We have access to everything, but we don't seem to have access to our brains. and ships and stuff carrying supplies they get smuggled in through vans and under buses and all this kind of shit and they get here and it's like we just and then we sit back and almost like we get jealous <laughs> like damn how come they doing this how come they doing that yes yes there's a systematic fence in place but damn Still, it's like we don't even understand that we should be thinking on behalf of ourselves. But we always thinking on behalf of others, but others think on behalf of the, on behalf of themselves. It's the weirdest thing. Y'all have to work. Y'all just have to forgive me this morning. It's just you know, <sighs> it's the weirdest thing. Y'all just go out and look at us. Look at us. Look at black. Don't look at nobody else. We've already talked about how white folks do, how Asians, how Jews, how homosexuals, how everyone else. Look at black people. Look at how we behave in this society. It's like we, we, we behave, we purport ourselves in such a careless and callous way. No protection for ourselves whatsoever. We don't even try to protect ourselves from motherfuckers who shoot up our churches. Or shoot up a girl. We don't even... It's like, it's like something's wrong. Like, But then, we, every time we look around, we scared when we go in the black neighborhood. Go cheese for some. Man, I'm gonna go that man. We need to around there killing folks. What? What? They ain't around there shooting up no whole grocery store. They ain't around there shooting up no whole school. But you blacks don't want to go to the hood. Ain't no folks killing motherfuckers. Get out of here. You killing me? No problem. With that behavior, that attitude. Boy, oh, boy, boy. College G. Woodson, Dr. Amos Wilson. Y'all talked about this, how, you know, Dr. John Henry Clark spoke about this, how, and, uh, and other scholars, uh, their names have come to me. They talked about how we just, you know, we, 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 it's like we give the actual traumatizer, the, the victimizer pass because we always felt, we feel like so defeated and helpless when it comes to them. So we just turn on, turn within, turn on each other, 
and do the most heinous and said most heinous things in our own race. We scared each other. I hear y'all. Man, you know, I ain't got to worry about nobody. You know, nobody white robbed me at the ATM. Because around there, Negroes, famous comedians. And I get that. I'm not trying to act like there's a perfection. We don't have our flaws. A lot of this stuff can be challenged, but we won't even challenge our behaviors. But then when it comes to white folks, just brutalize us. It's as if we don't have any defense whatsoever when it comes to it. We don't have any defense. Like, we don't know what to do. It's, 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 the, it's the weirdest thing to see. We, we just like, we we sit back and let them do stuff to us, then we wait on their, their, their justice system to bring us justice. Who does that in 2022? Except for a conquered and defeated people, right? Because even back in the day, they, they went out and took their chance on getting some kind of justice. We sit around here and wait on the very system that brutalized us to bring us justice. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Hold on, I'm going to let this wind blow so y'all won't miss this. I'll let this wind blow. The weirdest thing. And, and we have access to so much, but we, but we turn each other on to so little. We got black folks work all in the social services system. We got black folks work all in the mental health, but we, but we don't go to, we don't go and hit the neighborhoods and tell us what's the latest help is. We don't. You know how many black social workers and case workers and all these people are? It's like it's a setup. Look at this. Hold on a minute. You say, I'm comfortable on. Uh, <laughs> uh, Coach G says, I'm comfortable on every MLK Boulevard in the country. I, I am comfortable around there too in the early daytime, but I don't know about nighttime, Coach G. She might be pushing it, bro. Now, if they got a parade or something going in the daytime, but at nighttime when the activities pop off, eh, you know, let's, let's all, I love us too, bro, but let's all use a little common sense, you know, a little caution and common sense. A lot of us, most, as I speak, I'm letting you know, a lot of us are not well. Like, I, like Malcolm said, some of us act like we've lost our minds. You know, he said he took our minds, our land, our God, and our names. The way some of us act, we act as if we've lost our minds. And Malcolm X's words are still so true today. And we still just, we, we think we can get, we can degree out of it. We can pray out of it. We can, I don't know, marry out of it. This shit ain't going nowhere until we, until we confront it. I mean, confront it economically, politically, and, you know, with this right here. Hold on, I'm going to let that wind blow so y'all won't. Oh, that's not bad at all. I know it's probably messing up my volume here, right? Can't hardly hear me. But uh, must be getting closer to the little little pond up here, a little lake. But uh, doesn't make any sense. And the way we participate in the political system is just almost embarrassing. We've had. Uh, intelligent strategists after intelligent strategists to try to tell us this is the way you participate in the political system. But Clyde Anderson said we should be voting in blocks. What he's saying is, okay, what is the we with 12% of the population? How the hell we still 12% out of all these years? We still 12%? It's ridiculous. And please don't tell me, well, you know. A lot of black people killing themselves, uh, killing each other. You know, twenty black babies since the seventies, eighties. I don't know what's going on. I look around, I see a pregnant teen, so well, a pregnant teen, a pregnant son. So, black babies are still being born. So you can't keep telling us that we're just twelve percent of the population. We can't continue to do that. We're everywhere, but see, that's that those mind games that we buy into. Cause he's just marketing and psychology. No, we're not just twelve percent. Cause we're everywhere. One thing we haven't done is come 
come as a group. And I know I don't want to preach this unity stuff. That seems to offend black folks who got good jobs. Now I'm doing all right. We don't need to come together. So I don't want to offend you. Those of you who make a good living and made a good living, I don't want to, I don't want to offend you when I talk about unity and race. It's like when we make when we get over the fifty thousand dollar mark, all of a sudden race is not an issue anymore. Until your son or daughter leaves the suburb, the police get on their ass. That's racism. They upset because my son was driving a nice car and they pulled him over. No, they pulled him over. Yeah, you're right. So, oh, now you recognize racism? Economics doesn't defeat racism. You hear all these stupid people say, it's not about race, it's about class. You stupid jackass. <laughs> it's not about race, it's money. They even trying to minimize slavery. It was an economic thing. It wasn't about race. Well, how come they didn't go get nobody from China? How can they go get nobody from the Middle East? How can they go get nobody to other parts of Europe? But it went straight to Africa and got black folks. And from then on, number black folks. But yo, no. Not about race. I'm telling you, there's a lot of stuff I don't pay attention to. Or a lot of people I just put on ignore. You know? There's no need to even debate it. I said, oh, they're dead. Mentally dead. Ignorant. It's slow. It's slow. Greg Hume, what's up? So, <laughs> you know, I mean, when you hear somebody talking like that, it's not about race. It's about class. It's about st- <laughs> My God. Hell, even now, now within groups, now, yeah, because we get it wrong, we don't, we don't really pay attention to what we're saying. Race is about race. Race is about people. It's about superiority versus infinite, the mindset of inferiority. That's what it's about. It's always been about that. It's based on your race. And for all you brilliant multiculturalists, you know, we, 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 we uh, mistreated people because of the color of their skin. No, it's race, not the color of your skin. You know, some of us are so stupid, we don't know the difference between race and nationality. I'm so glad I like to read books. I'm so glad I don't turn a blind eye to racism. Those people always talking about race, they're living in the past. Well, the police whooping motherfuckers ass in the prison. So, what's the past in that? Yeah, they did in the past too. They called them patty rollers. Then in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, they beat brothers just because they was walking the street. Going to the grocery store with a grocery list for eggs, butter, and bread. Next thing he came across the mouth, teeth knocked out his mouth, head bust. So we have a history of that. And all you folks, there's no, you know the niggas with the good jobs. And you got your little non-black wife and non-black children. And all of a sudden, you America. No, you, what you did was you, you, uh, you, you tried a strategy in which you can survive in America. That's how I look at this. That's why I look at interracial dating, interracial marriage. It's just a strategy black folks use to try to survive under white racism instead of standing up like the Haitians did to the French and fighting for your humanity. You're just trying to, you're rather married in and reproduce it like this gonna change racism. If your biracial child is too dog, they gonna get the nigga from white folks. Hell, if they think, they realize they got their hair's a little too curly and they ain't Jewish, they finna catch it. One thing about Jewish whites, they can be white and get a nose job. They can still blend on them white folks, but your little mixed kid can't blend in. So you send them to the to a university, a white university. Hopefully, you or maybe you Oreo him out or Oreo her out. That'll no. One thing I like about white folks, they know what white is. <laughs> they know what white is. We don't know what black is. But then we call everybody black. So. Which is fine. Oh shit. We get out the street here. So, but we need to learn this stuff. Not about disliking or hating anybody. How about we just learn the politics or reality we live in? I don't give a damn about your idealism. Well, people all should love each other. People all should just let that race stuff go. But tell the ones who keep putting it in the system that because of my race, I need you at the bottom of the footstool because that's how we survive. Talk to them. Don't talk to the everyday uh, John Doe or Jane Doe. There's a there's an elite group. There's a group who runs this system. Wherever where you go, hell, even Oprah was over in Paris or France. Thought she was just gonna walk in the door. This woman worth a billion dollars. They still hell no no ma'am. 
They see her wallet, they saw her race. So, and it's not about, again, not about disliking anybody. It's about living in reality. That's the only thing I ask, just live in reality. You know, you, you, I'm nice to whoever's nice to me in reality. You know, if they're, if they're Caucasian, Hispanic, Jewish, gay, Asian, if you at that moment that we're we're in contact, you're nice to me. I'm cool with you. But I also watch you when you get in your groups. See, Dr. Claude Anderson taught us that race is a group affair. It's a race to resources, the race for domination. Race, it's a race. And black people, we we caught up in who the fuck likes us or who don't like us. That's what keeps us losing this race. You ain't gonna get this sermon in, your, in the regular Sunday morning worship at your church. I'm sorry, it's just not gonna happen. And we're playing, we're playing ourselves with our behavior. And I'm nowhere near perfect. I can go and party in any group, any multicultural, multiracial group, and have a blast. Again, if, you, when you, if you're nice to me at that moment, I'm nice to you. But I don't, because you're nice to me and nice to me in that moment doesn't mean, oh yeah, we're supposed to become a coalition. We're the only one that we talk thinking coalition is stupid. No one else thinks coalition with black folks except they want us to come buy something or get a vote from us. No one else, no other group says, let's, let's form a coalition with blacks. Nobody wants to coalition with blacks. Because they, they, when they live in the view as inferior, yeah, they got some use for you, but not at the seat of the table. That's why I don't know why we don't ever think to create our own table. They don't want to talk about what we can't do. But then we put out these reports saying how almost half a trillion dollars that black people spend. I said, wait a minute. Black people, it's not that we can't do it. We're stupid. Everybody brags about how much money black people spend with them. We can be, you're blacks. They generate about half a trillion dollars every year on all these various products. Food, clothing, jewelry, shoes, makeup, hair, sneakers. Yeah. We sure do a lot of spending. I think the spending that we do is trying to make up for the work we don't want to do to make ourselves free. The self hate has been put in there for over the years, so they all part in this wind. Know. And it is what it is. We're gonna get it together one day. Maybe uh, your children's children may understand it, but the way things are going now, we right here bragging, talking about, well, you know, next 50 years, we ain't gonna be no such thing as black people. We gonna be all be mixed up. I hear people say that all the time and it just irks my nerves. But I say, God damn, that person has a master's degree. That person has a, 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 a nursing degree. That person has a law degree. And they say stupid crap like that. I can expect folks in the ghetto to speak a certain way. Because you know, they're expected not to be the intelligent among us. Among us. But, uh, the, uh, but the, uh, the so-called talented 10th. Y'all not doing a good job of being good leaders. Those of you who believe that you're part of the talented 10th. Y'all not doing a good job. Y'all not leading the people down. Or maybe y'all doing what y'all supposed to do. Y'all strive for status and then thumb your nose up or look down your nose on everybody else. Because for y'all to be considered, like, consider yourself to be the leaders of our race, y'all not doing a good job. Y'all are terrible. Y'all worse than W.B. Du Bois when he started that bullshit. That's a talented tent. Y'all have let the 90% down. So I hope nobody still think they part of the talented tent today. Y'all have been, have been a damn letdown. You ain't led black folks to their own schools. You ain't led black people to economic success. You ain't led black people to political success or political autonomy. So what, why do you keep referring to yourselves, even in your mind, is I'm part of the talented tenth. No, you have no talent. You have like a tenth of talent. Because uh, no leadership abilities. You like to get appointed to every damn thing. You like to get elected to stuff, but you have no leadership ability. None the one that God expects you to have. You know, you get in all these positions and you stop. You claim you're going to do the law's work once you're elected. And you get there and then start working for Satan. Come on, somebody. 
build a fence. Oh Lord. They get out there and sell their soul to old Satan. Ooh. Who, who takes and steals angels from God. That's whether he's a robber and he's a deceiver. And he collects souls. Every time you get elected, you go straight to him to get your payment ahead of time. Won't he do it? Mm -hmm. So, the 90% is stuck around here like, damn. What's up, Kevin? Good morning. Like, damn. I thought that was for the leaders. <laughs> so, I hope y'all, I hope this video reaches some of the 90% realize the talented, the talented, the talented 10th have definitely let down the race. I know y'all hear what I said. A lot of, y'all know what I'm speaking in general. I know I got a lot of smart, intelligent people on my posts. And on my friends groups but there are some folks who still uh living at, at rainbow ideology we all together we all sure we all populate but uh, when it comes to the money the politics and the education very segregated yeah <laughs> come on somebody that's right it doesn't make any sense how we're still behind in 2022 you know yeah, we, we didn't even come to each other's rescue when the pandemic first hit. We didn't, we, we didn't do, we, but we love to talk about the days of old. How, you know what, black people, it's always together. Black people, we just, but those days, it's, it's over. Because y'all even teach our own children about black unity. They don't. And that's a lot of us who are part of Generation X. They teach the children about it. Now, I know a lot of you try to teach it. Your children get teased because a lot of other folks, the multiculturalists and the integrationists, they teach their children. There's no such thing as race. You go out there, you do hard work. Uh, you put your best foot forward and you do the work, you'll be rewarded. Uh, a man who doesn't work doesn't eat. Uh, all that bullshit. I mean, the people who've eaten and done all the hard work and still can't get no tenure, Dr. Cornell Wiss. <laughs> Y'all see it all the time. I see these black folks and put the time in, made the money, got the degrees, and they still get. <laughs> so why don't you just, why don't we just build our own? America's big enough for us to build our own. I know I'll be saying that because I ain't got a pot to piss in, but I do have a mind and a voice about this small, of the voice that is. But I'll, I'll use my little platform to make it do what it do. And uh, there's some things that have been brought up I want to run by y'all oh let me get across this so i can I me mean, run across the street uh, hey, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My goodness. so anywho um did y'all see this latest video with stacy abrams speaking of politics stacy abrams who so gonna try to run for governor of georgia again i hope she does not win yeah, i said it. Uh, she's a hater and a loser and a feminist and a lesbian, anti-black, liberal, democratic, darky. And, uh, and so, y'all need to tell me this. Let you know don't buy respect black people. Especially your Democrats. And I'm finna go there. So all you, you diehard Democrats, y'all go ahead and leave the post and go share the video, you know. But I don't understand how straight black men are still voting Democrat. I just don't understand. And I, I'm not how you plan. If those people who are supposed to be so politically in tune and so politically intelligent, I don't understand how straight black men are still voting for anything in a Democratic party. And especially women who are voting for Democratic women. And I'll tell you why. If you are not a homosexual, if you are not a woman, if you are not an illegal immigrant, or if you're not a child, why the hell are you voting for Democrats? That's all they stand up for. Every every woman, every man, black, whatever, that runs for Democratic office in your district or federal or state, what have you, local or whatever, they always mention 
you know, and, it, and they don't even mention black folks. I'm gonna get to Stacey, Stacey, Stacey Abrams in a minute. Cause it's tied into her. And y'all listen to these black female Democrats, these, these white liberal Democrats. All they talk about is black and brown. I'm not brown. I'm black. My race, not my skin color. My race is black. And brown means Mexican. I'm not a Mexican. But somehow, these Democrats always love to say black and brown. They do. Or they say poor people. Why the fuck all black folks know our race has to be the poor people? We got engineers and scientists and doctors and elected officials and high officers, but we're the poor people race. And a lot of us, unfortunately, have bought into that tag. What is wrong with that? You know, or then you say blacks and poor whites. Why, how the hell did my entire race have to be compared to just a segment, a small segment of white people? Blacks and poor whites. I'm so embarrassed by these so-called intelligent niggas with the degrees. Master degree, PhD, law degree, medical degree. They say blacks and poor people. Why the fuck my whole y'all see? Why all of us got to be lumped to with poor, poor white folks? I don't like that. And, and then needs to be said out loud when they give these speeches. The speech needs to be interrupted. First of all, who the fuck you call them comparing to poor white folks? That's their issue. And then and then if you hear them say. And then the Democratic black women don't even like to call themselves black when it's convenient, like I said. You know, uh, you know uh, black women and women of color. Women of color don't never mention black women. Brown people don't never mention black folks when they're doing their thing. You got your black Democratic politicians. Black and brown. People of color. I'm so sick of them. Again, if you are a heterosexual man, meaning if you don't know what that big word means, if you're a man who does not have thoughts of or have sex with other men, with, with a man, you have no business voting for Democrats. They don't represent anything that straight, free-thinking, masculine men are down with. They don't. Rico, what do you think we should be doing? Anything other than Democrat. It can be conservative, Republican, it can be Green Party, What's the other, and, and the other two other parties. Any other parties, at least, and one thing they don't talk about, that I'm shocked that a lot of us don't even pay attention to, they never talk about the family. Say what you want to say about conservatives, they always mention mother and father and the man being the head of the household. It's like black men have so, been so put out and, and uh, ostracized from the household that you ain't think of yourself as being the head of the house. And the women just go with it because the party re represents or benefits black women, single black women, lesbian black women. The conservative party does not talk about anything LGBT. It does not talk about anything unless it's talking about man and woman and children, family. But the Democrats never talk about family. No, they, they never talk about black boys and black men. So let's go to this lesbian. Uh, rumored to be alleged lesbian and how come all the not all but how come so many of the democratic leaders and women they're lesbians or they got white husbands or they got a lesbian lover or they single women single women with children single women i mean they just they just all over the place that's why they never talk about family because democrats are made up of lgbt the women that run most of them are lesbians, or they got a secret lesbian lover, or they're women with children. They'll hardly have no husbands. So I don't understand. Ah, shit. Never voting for no damn Democrat, and especially vote for no Democratic woman. Now, I vote for a conservative black woman, because one thing about it, y'all can say what you want to say about Kim Clasey, or Clasiastic, whatever name, Kim Clasic. Sonny Johnson, Candace Owens, just to name a few of the conservative, and I, and I vote for some conservative white women. Because one thing they talk about, except for, you know, in my home state of Tennessee, that bitch named the name of Marsha Blackburn. Terrible. That bitch is the wife of the KKK. But you have to pick and choose. I'm talking about the black conservative, because that seemed to be the one that pissed black folks off when you find out that a black person is there leaning towards conservatism. <sighs> Those women might, and then they say, well, they got white husbands. Well, all you Democratic bitches got white husbands, too. But they seem to be okay because they're Democrat. 
It's weird. I'm telling you, we, we, I'm telling you, you give us a load of gun, we, we aim it directly at our foot. <laughs> Just stupid. Give us a pair of shoes, we put one of the shoes in our mouth. Or, or foot, whatever. Work it out. Just dumb. And so, race doesn't seem to matter when it's a black chick that's got a white man or other. But when it's a black man that got money, these brothers, all, that's all they do. They don't want no black queens. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. Shout out to my Johnson and Shannon Sharp. But uh, Stacey Abrams on 85 South. Y'all know who that is? Uh, what's his name? Carlos. Uh, the, look, all them little them wild and out dudes. Carlos Miller and DC Young Fly and all them other. You know, I don't, I'm, I, Carlos Miller's kind of funny. You got, I can only watch three minutes of them, but I can't do a whole comedy show or none of these. Unless what I call these urban comedians, I don't like that crap. Too much N-word for me. I don't like all the N-words, a lot of stereotype jokes. And this shit. Maybe because I'm older and mature, more mature, none of that shit is funny to me. But Carlos Mills, I can watch like a two minute skit, two minutes of his comedy routine, but I cannot sit through a whole hour of that foolishness. This young fly, he ain't never been funny to me. But it's not to disparage him. What I'm saying is, isn't it interesting that all of your Democratic candidates, when they want to talk about their, their platforms or whatever, they go straight to the comedians or the rappers. They don't ever go to you know, intelligent black folks that are at, at, pose them real, that pose real questions to them. Stacey Abrams went to 85 South where they smoke blunts and cuss and say N-word all day long. But they had, had some stuff coming out. But the one thing about it, I have to give them credit. And it wasn't Carlos Miller. It was that, that, that heavy set, thick dude with the thick beard. He the one seemed to come out with the heavy hitter stuff when the few times I've watched that show. I don't know what that cat's name is. DC Young fly there to try to be funny. Carlos tried to look, well, well what about this? You know. But that young brother, he was saying, you know, but come uh Stacey Abrams is on it. He said, Well, how come? And you can find this on my Rico the Opinionist page. I have the video, so you can watch the whole video. The brother asked Stacey Abrams. How come, why is it such a problem with politicians or black politicians not only to say the word black, but to say in your, during your campaign, you're going to do something specifically and only for blacks. How come that seemed to be such a problem that DC Young Fly said, man, yeah, like reparations, we need reparations. So Stacy's sitting back there like she's so cool. And when she opens her mouth, she sounds like Snow White. Ah, well, the, the problem with that is, ah. Uh, you know, we're only 12% of the population. Ah. You know, she tried to sound like she weighed 125 pounds when she actually weighed 225. Ah. But 12% of the population is all. Uh, you don't want to, like, uh, what did you say? In other words, piss some people off when you do that. You know, upset some people. Uh, and then you don't want to just say what you're gonna, you can do anything specifically for black people. I understand, though, but you don't want to do that. And so... In so many words, go check it out. That's what she said. You don't want to just mention black people because they're only 12% of the population and you want to alienate the others. And then because you need everyone, you, not just black people, you need everyone to, uh, to win an election. All right, how about that? And so they went on. All right, Stacey Abrams and everybody who thinks. Now, she's not the only one who said this. Y'all know that, right? Every black politician, including Barack Obama, has made that statement and insulted black folks to their face. But you're so busy caught up in being a Democrat, think you're doing the black thing, that your, your, your intelligence seems to ooze out your right and left ear when these, when these people are talking. But thank God I'm an independent and I use my own brain. Thank God there are a lot of thinking critically, thinking blacks out there who caught this and they're spreading the news. But then again, but let's go back though. Stacey Abrams is not the only one who made this statement. Know who else made this statement? Y'all still voted for him? Kamala Harris. You, and she had it with, with her hand like, you think I'm going to vote just for black people? You think I'm going to vote for black people? Huh? You know, <laughs> wow. You think I'm going to do something specifically for black people? Like, wow, she really got barbecue, backyard barbecue, fish fry on them. Black people? And so she said it. Barack Obama said it. All of them said it. And we're so stupid. 
I know you hate, no, it probably sound offensive when I say our race is dumb. It's like we get dumber by the summer. Because we've gotten away from God, we've gotten away from our scholars. We get dumber by the summer. We let Satan give us our school books to read from. And so therefore we've gotten away from what God has taught us innately as African people. We've gotten away from us. That's why we look so dumb in the eyes of the world. That's why we look lazy and defenseless to anybody who wants to mass shoot us and and shoot up school, shoot up church. Because they, they, don't, they don't fear any blowback, pushback. So having said that, Stacy said, but well, let me tell y'all something. Isn't it interesting? And Dr. Claude Anderson talked about benign neglect. And it is a rule, and I heard uh, this brother, Philip, uh, his video that I put on my Rico the Opinion is uh, page. He talked about it. This benign neglect that Dr. Claude Anderson talks about in his videos. Where, and uh, but this brother Philip, the Philip show, he 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 took it back to the Moynihan Report of 1969-1970. As he said, and Dr. Claude Anderson states, you are never to mention black people specifically. You are never to mention black people specifically. If you're a politician, president, governor, mayor, nobody who's in charge, you are never to, to mention or do anything for black people specifically because you have to understand as it relates to the Constitution, we're still under the three-fifths rule. And, and that's why I always pose the question. You say, well, Rico, how are we still three-fifths? I said, well, we're the only group who still has to have their voting rights approved every 25 years. Illegal immigrants, once they get nationalization status, they don't have to worry about no damn voting rights. White people ain't never had to worry about no voting rights. Asians who come over as immigrants, nobody. But black people, we've been here 400 years and we still have to go through the House, Senate, and the Congress, House, the House and the Senate to get voting rights voted on. That's, that's why I always say civil rights movement was bullshit. And we fell for it. It was just dumb. Good morning, Miss Adrian. It was trash. We still have not educated ourselves past that because we never want to pay attention to our African centered scholars. If a Negro preacher didn't tell us, we don't want to hear. And that's why we're still behind. That's why we're still making those same mistakes. Let's go back to that Stacey Abrams bitch. You're never supposed to mention black people specifically. Dr. Per Dr. Claude Anderson, per the uh, J. Moynihan, right, what's the Moynihan Report of 1969, 1970, when he said there's two Americans, one black, one white. And then we forgot that we still think that we're past being three fifths of a human in this country. That's why they push everybody around us and, and ahead of us. Because we're not, we're not looked at as real people. So having said that, it is an it, isn't it interesting that Stacey Abrams, Kamala Harris, Barack Obama, and any black politician that you've ever voted for in Memphis and Dallas, Chicago, whatever, they all say, well, you know, I'm the mayor. And we had a mayor in Memphis, Willie Harrington's name. I'm the mayor for all the people, that kind of shit. But, but it was white folks that was tearing his ass a new one. <laughs> so... Yeah, all of them. Get the, I'm mayor for all the people, but you got 90% black vote that took you over the top. Even, uh, I think it was that, that congressman in Alabama. That's what got him over the top. We can't win to this black vote. Well, you always seem to get the majority. That seemed to, to take you over the top, politician. But we, buy, we, we celebrate that. Oh, yeah. We used to put that candidate in. As soon as they get in, they do nothing for you. And that seems to doesn't bother our community for some reason that as soon as they, we put these people in office, they move on and start working on everyone else's interests. And as I move forward, Stacey Abrams, she said, it cannot. And it, it would not be beneficial to the candidate. But it's interesting, when it comes to passing laws, uh, now we're only 12% of the population, right? Okay. Homosexuals are less than 1.1% of the population. Asians are like more like 5 or 6%. Jews are like two to three percent. Asians, Jews, homosexuals. How come we always hear something that's being done for them? 
Again, Asians are 6%. Homosexuals like barely 1%, 1.5%. Uh, Asians, 6 Jews, about 2 3%. Black people, 12%. So, y'all help this make this make sense now. Well, we can't get anything done just uh, off of just, uh, just black people voting. But Asians don't even vote at even hardly 50%. And even with the homosexuals, their vote will even make up nearly the percentage of how black people vote for like candidates. Y'all see how that how nobody respects blacks, y'all, but we always concentrated on who's a Republican. Who's a black Republican? Who's a conservative? And you got and you you they didn't let when you when you got the you don't have the wolf, but you let the fox in the hen house. And that's how we always do. We don't want that old snarling, grabbing, growling wolf. But we'll let but that fox can come on in and tie and eat all the goddamn chickens. And we want, and we're so stupid we say, hey, uh, it's not a whole chicken, but there's some chicks that were just laid, and we'll get the chicks to the fox. That's how black people are asking how uh, are behaving. That's how y'all behave with Democratic candidates. That's how you behave with Barack Obama. That's how you behave us in sickening manner with Bill Clinton. That's how you behave with this retarded old man, Joe Biden. But as soon as you hear the word Trump, everybody literally goes ape shit. And can't nobody who calls himself just like Trump can ever say politically, how did Trump hurt black people? Now, it may, now you think you hurt your feelings. Who cares? Fuck your feelings. We talking about facts. Ain't there nothing in America. But Biden has been destroying blacks since the 80s with his crime bills directed. He said you can't do nothing specifically for blacks. But how come when they, whenever they do housing loans, they do crime bills, they do all kinds of stuff to try to fight crime, it seems to always be specifically geared towards blacks. I'll tell y'all, don't make me feel like I'm the only man that got sense, okay? Stop making me feel that way. I know I ain't the only one that got sense, goddammit. I'm not, I know I'm not the only one who has eyes and who can see. See, I'll cut it out, please. Stop making me feel so smart. Yeah, because I know damn well I'm not the smartest guy in the room. But we just sit here, we just act stupid. I don't know what it is. Is stubbornness or just cowardice? Or, or is it true that when Malcolm said we didn't land on Plymouth Rock, Plymouth Rock landed on us. And I think a lot of us are still suffering from the bruising from Plymouth Rock landing on us. Because we're not thinking. As soon as someone gives a great speech, oh, we're just enthralled. <laughs> we just love it. And so it's like we purposely allow, allow ourselves to become pacified on music and movies and TV and TV shows. And, but we don't read books anymore. I mean, not books that'll keep that move our race forward. Yeah, I said the word race again. It's amazing. And for those of you just coming in, this is my Sunday morning worship. Amen. When they do it, hallelujah. Build a fence. Show us thy light, O oh Lord. Lead us nearer to thee. But it's something not right. We got the books. They were written back in the 80s, 90s, and brand new. And we have articles written. We just won't read them. Your preacher sure ain't going to tell you because, you know, 90% uh, of church is women. So they're not going to tell no truth in that. I mean, women feel like they have to change their behavior. Uh-uh. So you got a lot of pander bears. Panderers. Fergie, good morning. So the preacher ain't going to tell us this truth. If he is, he ain't going to be no mega preacher. Cause if, you, if you're a preacher and tell the truth, you're going to have a 20 people in your church. A lot, a lot of us have been bought on sweet lies and can't stand just a hint of a bitterness of the truth. And that's why we are today. Here we are, 2022. <laughs> Still talking about the same shit that was, they was beating our ass and uh, doing slavery, beating our ass, doing Jim Crow, beating our ass, doing civil rights. We still, here we are, people doing handheld drones right now and iPhone 13 Pro. And we still talking about some goddamn voting rights. We still talking about some goddamn equality. <laughs> it's not white people, it's us. They've done that number. Carter G. Woodson already wrote about it. You take the, you, you, 
get a man's mind, you take the rest of his body, and we do everything but, but the right thing when it comes to pushing our race forward. We just think we, and we try to give each other these old weird ass proverbial pats on the back for doing what I call race training behavior. Just dumb. But again, can't make no money speaking like the way I speak. You can't make no money. I'm trying, y'all, to get out of it. Hell, I'm 53 now. Am I ever going to get out of it so I can live a peaceful, happy, happy life? If I can stop worrying about what's going on with black folks and do like so many millions of blacks do and worry about my own ass, my own ass exclusively, I wasn't built like that. Uh, not, not, I, hey, is it... Like, uh, like, you know, we've always said, you know, when God gives you an assignment, come on. And he's given assignments to many men and women that we didn't appreciate. We didn't appreciate Jesus. We didn't appreciate Marcus Garvey. We didn't appreciate Fannie Lou Hamer. We didn't appreciate Ida B. Wells Barnett. We didn't appreciate Harriet Tubman. We didn't appreciate nobody who God's given an assignment to. But everybody that come up with the bullshit, we give them all the money, all the attention. Everything that keeps us entertained. And entertainment has its place. When you, you know how you work hard all week and you made your money and you built something? Yeah. Let's go ahead. Saturday night, let's let our hair down. We haven't done the work yet. So, but we, we, do, we do our plan as it relates to our race. We play all week. We play all week. We don't do the work. So I don't see how we, why we got so much to party about, kick it about. All this stuff is distraction from black liberation and black freedom. We play all day long, all week. When normally you do the hard work all week, you've earned your money, you've built your foundation, then you take a Saturday night out or a Friday night out or both nights to man, let your hair down and get it in. And then Sunday you rest and Monday go right back to making sure, maintaining the fence you built around your race. Man, we, how come everyone else understands that except for us? And it's so interesting. Just like during the Civil Rights Movement, during Jim Crow, black people were paying taxes. And, uh, and then when Mexicans started coming to the country and all these other immigrants, they get to live off the taxes that you've always paid, that we've always paid, but we never got the full benefit of. Don't y'all know all the stuff they're doing for immigrants and all these illegal folks and all they come from your tax dollars? You can't even get five fifty million dollars to 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 bring job development in your neighborhood, but you pay taxes for other folks that live better than you, and you actually work here. How you thinking? But let's y'all then. We have a problem. So I talked about this illegal immigration law because they're white and they're Republican. Hell, it actually helps you. When they come over there, all they do is rob you to make them better. Then they get better. And guess what they do? They go straight over into. <laughs> Them, themselves and start fighting against you once they get enough English in and they start making enough money and they already get get the food stamps and the Medicaid and all that when they come over here can you go to Mexico and get any of this hell no can you go to Guatemala and get any of this hell no can you go in any parts of Central America and get food stamps welfare free free medical now you might go to Cuba and, and kick it but we don't have Cubans trying to come over here through Texas and Tennessee and Arkansas, Mississippi and all of that. We have a folks from all of the Latin countries where you can't take your black ass over there and get nothing. They're going to stop you at the border or they find out you there. Find out about their laws, about people sneaking into the country or forcing their way over. Don't give a damn what happened. America just brings it in. You know why? Because they look, they're already replacing the black vote. But isn't it interesting? Y'all ain't even paying attention to this stuff. Isn't it interesting? As long as the immigrants look like white folks, they let them over. But soon as the Haitians came over, they look like me and you. Shit, they got airplanes and helicopters lifted 13,000 people back to Haiti. War-torn, earthquake-destroyed Haiti. <laughs> but I'm, but I'm, uh, Rico, you always focusing on race. Race happens every day in the news. We make a choice to turn a blind eye to our own trauma our own attacks against us we got so much work to do within our own race we shouldn't even worry about what's going on nowhere else people worry about what's going on in the world but right there in your own neighborhood folks are uh, poor folks are homeless 
full of drugs, selling drugs, but you worry about, ooh, them folks in Ukraine. Ooh, them people in Ukraine. Ooh, them folks over there. <laughs> we got too much to be actually starting. We got too much work that we could be concentrating on and worry about what the fuck going on in Europe. I guarantee you, none of them European countries with a where the Nazi skinheads run rampant don't give a damn about Negroes or live in urban America. But yeah, I mean, this shit is so wicked and so smart they got y'all worrying about what's going on in world affairs. But it's interesting. The same folks that worry about what's going on in these European countries, how poor they are, how they're starving, how Russia tried to take out Ukraine. Though none of you mentioned about the, maybe the, the suffering that's going over in Africa by way of those same Europeans and, and Chinese. Why do I have to keep saying this shit? Told you we got us good. It's like S&M. We're the maskers. We love the pain. We love it when the white races and, and racist system paddle us on the ass. Hit me again. Uh, smack. Smack. Hit me again. Uh, then take that flog. Oh, that's it. And then get those little those clothespins and squeeze our nipples with the wire, wire pliers or the clothespins. Ah, some more. Hit me again. And that's how we act. Like we just love that torture. Like it sexually turns us on to be shot up and discriminated against it. Turned down for loans, housing loans, and given extra APR annual percentage rates on, on car loans and all of that. But like like it makes us hot or something. I don't know, it's the weirdest damn it's the weirdest existence in 2022. But we'll get together one day. Let me get back to uh, Stacey Abrams. You know, if anybody that black that votes for her in Georgia is stupid. That's dumb. And again, I know I ain't voting for no damn Democrats. You know, can't be no worse, nowhere else. So, let me, I'm going to go to this uh, this debate between Dr. Umar Johnson and uh, Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp, let me tell you about these black celebrities, how they use their platforms. Now, y'all hear my, my commentary on Bronny James dating a white girl and LeBron James. And that's where it seems to be coming from. You know, everybody, all the brothers and other and some others coming to defense of you no know, black men's right to date whoever they want to. And black men do have the right to date whoever they want to. It's funny how black women try to tell black men who to date. But every time you look around, they're praising Janet Jackson, Serena Williams, Tika Sumter, Eve, and everybody else of just a black female that gets a white man. That's right, love knows no color. You know, love has no bounds. Get your life, sis. Yes, but soon as a rich black man, intelligent black man, decides he don't want to date a black woman, <laughs> all of a sudden, Dr. Umar Johnson comes out and who's who trying to pander to black women still. And I told you about that, Dr. Umar Johnson. You know what? You would have got more money for your school had you not pissed on brothers and tried to kiss the women's ass. Dr. Umar, if you had respected black men and talked about the efforts and the, and the, and, and the, the progress and the, 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 what's called the struggle of black men in this country, had you had used your voice to do that? There have been so many brothers coming in to help you men lay down roofs and everything else, but you're so busy trying to cut a, cut a, cater to the women, and you know women ain't never built shit. You know, a lot of brothers would come out who, who are mechanics and who are uh, uh, carpenters and engineers and electrical engineers, and probably would have helped you, but you're so busy catering to black women, and again, black women ain't never built shit. Uh, eyelash store, uh, uh, non-profit ain't building shit, meaning... They ain't built no buildings, they ain't built no bridges, they ain't put in no electrical wiring, they ain't, they ain't uh, pulled up no floor and put down a new floor, they don't do that, men do. And so you playing yourself on that, but trying to pander to the same women who got on your ass and used with that conscious stripper. <laughs> you know, and also, I guess people make the point that, how you trying to tell who black men should be dating Omar Johnson? You ain't never married no black woman, you ain't had no family, no cheering. See, I don't really get into that. What I talk about is the reality. You know, and if you look at my video, I didn't get on the little brother for uh, one of the day. What I said was, and y'all hear me good. If you are interested in building our race to keep it going forward, 
then you'll know what you should be doing. You can't date outside the race if you're trying to keep the black race forward. For me, when people decide to date out, they've given up on pushing the black race forward, but they just want to move forward onto something else. That's how it is. When you decide to get no, get no, marry Mexican, Asian, white, you have no interest, no more interest, you've moved on from the black race. As it relates to, because uh, mixed is not black. So I don't know what y'all keep saying, that stupid shit is not black. But it doesn't mean that they're, they're rejected or anything. I'm just letting y'all know biology. Must be making these decisions, trying to rationalize the shit. But Umar Johnson, but he does make a point when it comes to if you're interested in pushing the black race forward. A lot of us have been, we bought, we bought into the whole multicultural, we're all human kind of shit, and living under reality and capitalism. It don't work like that. And so, but he has some good points about it. And I'm about black men being happy with whoever makes you happy. However, it's not that simple. Because both black men and black women who date out are playing games. They're working out some kind of weird ass hurt or something. I don't know. Uh, if you're interested in pushing the black race forward, then your behavior will show it. And all that you do is relates to your money, your politics, and who you lay down with or who you reproduce or marry. Reproduce with, marry and reproduce with. So haven't said that. Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp. Your response is simplistic, but I understand it. No, you can't. And then this is what he said. You can't, if you want somebody to be miserable. Now, he wasn't talking about miserable with an Asian, miserable with a white woman. He said, if you want some black man to be miserable, he implied that black women as a, as a whole or in general make black men miserable. And so that's why he... No, he is. <laughs> he does walk barefoot in the snow. Shannon Sharp. He talks a lot of black good game on his job. But look at his behavior outside the job. He keeps him a white woman. And the only closer to black he ever tried to date was Nicole Murphy. <laughs> y'all already saw her white mama. So, I hear you. And stop calling your big overgrown ass Shay Shay. You're too big for that. Though you don't know, Shannon Sharp has a podcast. Very interesting, very good. But I can never just get past his big old Negro who called himself Shay Shay. Shay Shay's Clubhouse. Like, dude, you're too big for that. And it's, it's, and it's so effeminizing. Why can't it be Shannon's, Shannon's Club? Shannon Speaks. Shay Shay. It reminds me of Shay Shay and Renee and Warren and Ronald. They used to live across the street in, in North Memphis where I used to live. I grew up at. My childhood friends. Shay Shay, Renee, Ronald. And, uh, Ron, Warren and Charles. Is it Ronald, Warren, and Charles? Yeah, so I think Takora had like five kids. And Shay Shay was like the, the second oldest daughter. And for me to hear, see a big six foot five, 225 pound, this Negro got muscles in his fingernails, call himself Shay Shay. Like, nigga, please. Really, Shannon? Let me tell you, Skip. And you know, uh, I whip Will Smith's ass here, come my way, Skip. And uh, by the way, come to my Shay Shay clubhouse on my podcast. Shay Shay, bro. I, I can't, I can't do it. What's with this? What's wrong with these black men, ladies? Y'all help me out. What's wrong with them, brothers? Masculine brothers. What's wrong with these dudes? Like Cedric Entertainer said, you know, he ran across a dude that called himself Delicious. He said, I ain't finna call no grown ass man Delicious. I'm not finna call no big ass Shannon Sharp Shay Shay. Am I the only one that see a problem with that or am I tripping? <laughs> and Mary Max said he called. He called. Yeah, he did. Did he, Mary Max? Called Earthquake when he was on the show, Quake Quake. What is with Shannon Sharp? <laughs> I'm telling you, y'all better, better bet these dudes. I mean, when I see that, I said, when I see Shannon Sharp. It's like, it's almost like King Kong grabbing the white woman and climbing to the tallest building, the Empire State Building, getting up there, rah, Arr, I'm so mad, y'all got the game wrong, rah, 
And then, uh, I'm so mad. Now nah, I'm finna keep the white bitch. Uh. And then all of a sudden, yeah, you bring these airplanes. Them little bullets ain't shit. Yeah, y'all can hit me. I'ma knock him out the air anyway. Yeah. Then they start shooting King Kong with the bullets. Pow, 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 pow. You're like, ooh, uh uh. Mm -mm, I ain't know it's gonna be like this. I know what y'all can have this little bitch. I'm finna get off this building. I'm finna take my ass back to the jungle. And I'm gonna quit playing with these people with these guns. Uh uh. And he, and he shimmies on back down the building. That's a. <laughs> Imagine King Kong going there. Oh, uh-uh. I ain't no, ooh, I ain't gonna, gonna hurt like that. Ooh, too many bullies. No. Shay Shay. That ain't how it's supposed to go. Are you insane? So anyway. Yes, black women out of control in general. But you know, for someone to use that platform, Shannon Sharp, to make a statement like that. And nobody's telling black men to be happy. I encourage. I always tell black men, go to whoever's making you smile. Who's, I'm sorry, who's smiling at you. Because it is a reality. You want black men coming there smelling good with the most expensive cologne, nice clothes, and black chicks won't give them the time of day. And that is a reality. That is the truth. And so, I'm telling black men who got their stuff together, they're college educated, got a business, or they work a job that pays them really well, they got a home or a nice apartment and car, you know, and they're intelligent. You ain't got to do no work. She said, I already see that in you. But black chicks don't care who it is. They'll try to make all the black men come to their knees. But let a white man or whatever come in the room, all of a sudden, they, they're smiling, they're frilly, they're, they're like southern bells. I declare, white man, you, I'm over here. Hey, how are you? Hi, yonder over there. You over there, yonder. Yeah, this, of course not all, but y'all know what I'm talking about because they get, they get giddy. Because it's already been advertised. Go get you a white man. It's, uh, we gonna die best. That's something new. It's an Ilathan's old movie. You know, that's fine. But I just need you when a brother decides to mess with the other, close your mouth. Because you open your mouth when no black chick does it. That's all. But my thing is, you know, I just need everybody to be honest. You know, because I, I, I haven't met every black woman in America. I haven't traveled all over the country enough and haven't walked up to even 500,000 black women. So I don't know. But I know. But images are real and, and behavior is real. And we've been suckered into falling out of love with each other. We fell for it. We've fallen out of love with each other. People have talked us out of each other. Where the fuck, where y'all think we going to go? No, no black man and black. Say no black man, no black woman like each other. Where the fuck we going to go? Because we just don't think about Africa as being the place where we can replenish our bloodline. We got we are 54 countries in Africa. You don't hear not one American Negro of means of a, of a stat of a platform to say, you know what? These American women are assholes. So I'm gonna go to Zimbabwe. I'm gonna go to uh, Tanzania. I'm gonna go to Ghana. I'm gonna go to Ethiopia, Etrez. I'm gonna go to Nigeria. I'm gonna go to Botswana. I'm gonna go to the uh, the uh, 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 Rwanda. Uh, 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 what's that? Uh, cool, uh, shit, the other one. Well, one of those 54 goddamn countries. And you don't hear the sisters say, I mean, no, I'm finna go give me an African brother. No, one of those countries. We go around all of this blackness. We say, we, we always love to say in the country community, you know, black people, we outnumber the world. But it's funny when you go out dating, you go straight to white folks and Asians. Y'all help that make sense now. Now you're gonna say we outnumber everybody. And we say that black folks don't act the same way in other countries, but when we go to other countries, we go straight to white folks. I'm, I'm again, go where you want to go. But y'all gonna have to help me make sense now. <laughs> you know, I have my problem with behavior of sisters too, but I ain't my behavior ain't so bad. And I and it's not like me being afraid to go anywhere else. Now I just never thought about it because I understand the assignment that God gave me, and He gave our race, because everyone else is. Reading their assignment. Keep your race going. We don't understand it. And then we won't even try to set up programs to bring here you know, the refugees or whatever, whatever you call Africans and into our midst. We need we need let me tell y'all some black Americans. Listen to me. We need Africans. We need African blood to replenish our weakened blood. Cause we've multiracial and multicultural and integrated our blood so much. We need that. We read that. We need that original pure blood that came directly from God. 
and we get that African blood. We need our people to be replenished in this country. So I understand why we're not setting up the way the Catholic Charities does, set up churches everywhere, or, or nonprofits where we can um, you know, bring them in and raise them up and bring them up. And sisters, y'all study y'all going, you know, you go to Jamaica, you go to Bahamas, but you don't go down there and find no black husband. Same thing, brothers, they go past the Bahamas, they go past Jamaica, <laughs> And if they go to these so-called dark countries, they come out with a mulatto. <laughs> That's just crazy. <laughs> Y'all cut it out, guys. I, I get it. I just need everybody to be honest. Again, I understand this behaviors. Sisters, they've they, they been, they, they, they bought for, they, they, they got chipped. They paid money for a raw bill of goods. Well, you go to these Colombians, you go to these Costa Ricas, these Belize, and go straight to the white women of their country. But you say that you're upset with black women, and then you're called on, you say, well, it's not about race, it's culture. Yeah, they say that. All right, well, all right, I'm going to give you culture. But guess what, y'all think no... <sighs> How y'all think Belize, Costa Rica, Colombia was created? By Africans. In every picture, when I go to some of these passport brothers group pages or black men travel, don't none of them say they've been to an African country. If they've been, if none of them say they've been to the Bahamas, they've been to uh, Jamaica. They all talk about Colombia, and they come out with an average at best ass Colombian bitch. Don't even look better than Jennifer Lopez. I like if y'all go. Let me tell you something. If I go to Colombia, Belize, or Costa Rica, or something, I'm gonna get me a sister that look like one of the pretty sisters over here. But she's going to have a different mindset. That's the problem we have. It's the mindset. It's the culture. If I go to any one of these countries, if I don't go to Africa, but if I go to Jamaica, if I go to uh, Bahamas and I see a beautiful sister, you know, you know, I always like them dark skin. That's my preference. You know, I'll come back with a dark skin sister who does not think like a feminist black American asshole. Oh, that, so I think well, I'll, I'll come back with one who comes from the Bahamian culture. Or the Jamaican culture, no, an African culture like what? Now I'm not hearing. They kind of rough, but um, but one of them other ones, Etrian, Ethiopian, Etrian, um, Ghana, Botswana, Tanzania, you know who, those cultures that where the women are, you know, agreeable and feminine and submissive, and they, you know, to men who men who are doing what they're supposed to do, not you just being a regular. Go my pile ass black dude. Uh, hi, uh, yeah, you gonna be submissive to me? I ain't got nothing, but you know, I know it hurts y'all like men, so come on up. No, not you, goofy ass. No real man, like, no, like me. See, I know what to do if I got a woman who just does what she's supposed to do and she's real nice and she has a very girly and feminine force. I know what to do. I understand. But a lot of you guys want these feminine, so called submissive women because of ego. No, Build yourself up as a man first. Don't let somebody else try to make you feel like a man, old lame ass, weak ass, uh, game boy, game station, PlayStation playing, Spider Man t shirt wearing bastard. You <laughs> come on, man. Get the boogers out your nose first. Maybe some of these American sisters talk to you. Get the butt off your teeth. Comb your hair, bro. Shape that ragged ass beard up. Get in the gym, fluffy nuffagus. You know, maybe some of these sisters have looked your way. Nobody cares about you having a full point on high school, goofy ass. Yeah. It ain't about having extreme swagger. It's about you having confidence. So, get some confidence. And you might run across the right one. Or build you one of them cute little nerd girls. They wear the glasses, but she got a cute little shape. She just wear, wear big t-shirts and stuff all the time. Get with her. And little nerd chicks, get with the nerd guys. Y'all both like Comic Con, goddammit. So y'all go there together. So that's how I am. And I mean, I, and I know, I see some of these pages. You say uh, black American women, but then you go to Colombia, go to Belize, Costa Rica, all of this stuff, and you go get you somebody that look like Jennifer Lopez. I thought it was, I thought it was black women had a problem with. I mean, black American women based on culture. No, nah, you just don't want sisters, period. Fine. But guess what? You can find that same mixed mestiza that you find in Colombia. You can find a same biracial chick that's sweet and submissive and live in any suburb in America. 
especially if she grew up with white friends in the suburbs a lot of submissive sweet feminine biracial chicks in america see y'all playing games <laughs> playing games in my opinion if you're gonna do that why you gotta go so and now let me i got another suggestion you know, but do what you want. I don't want to come across as a hater or none of that. I don't want to do that because it's not me. I just like to put out all the information. I was just thinking, you know, instead of leaving the country, guys, will not y'all go to the country? But believe it or not, because these are suggestions in my own head. I said, well, shit. There's something that we ain't never said that we, we recognize, but we never say it out loud. A lot of sweetest women come out the country. So a lot of, instead of y'all going to Belize and Costa Rica, Maybe I should go to Mississippi, Alabama, the country parts of Louisiana. Unless we know Louisiana got some nice and beautiful and home and, and uh, domesticated women because half everybody that came from Chicago, that came from some city in California, they end up marrying them women and staying down here. <laughs> and they've been married for over 25 years and cheering grown and going to Grammy. So, <laughs> shit. Y'all playing games, man. You're playing games, in my opinion, yeah. You're putting out a false narrative, kind of. Go to Mississippi and get you one of them country girls that cook, cleans. She's not stupid. She just lives a, a what's called a more relaxed lifestyle in the country. And, 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 now, if you get across a woman like this, it's not one. Don't you be a dickwad and a, and a possessive, ordering asshole. Just be a man, baby. Yeah. Did y'all know? Y'all hear it a lot because Kevin Samuels spoke about this. I'm not, and, lot, and even those who, before Kevin came on the scene, seen talk about this. You know what brings the femininity and the woman out of a woman? It's your masculinity. Be a man, baby, yeah. Just be a man. And country girls, they like a man. Y'all know what a man is if you haven't, because you've heard me say it, a man. You know that uncle you had? That, he had that whisk in his back pocket, but he could still work on cars. And he took the oil rag, wiped his hands with the oil rag, and wiped the sweat off his brow with the same oil rag. That's a man. Hand me, hand me that, uh, that screw down that wrench over there. And when he went there, and while you handed it to him, he already screwing the lug nug nut on the motor with his, with his hand. He get it just, he'll do it with this. Geek, geek, cause hell, he halfway tightened it with his own fingers. Shit, that's a man. Gone. He actually do something, you take too slow, move. He go ahead and do it. He's not a man of few words, but he gets the job done. They didn't make all the money, but a woman, as long as he made some money, because she know what to do with some money. Y'all don't hear me, come on. So we, 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 we messed all this stuff up. Where y'all think we first met at? You think we all met in Chicago and Dallas? Uh, uh, the, urban, the urban part of New Orleans? You think we all met in San Francisco? We met in LA? God damn, we met in the country. Your parents met in the country. So I don't know how we got away from that. <laughs> it's the weirdest damn thing. Your grandparents and grandparents before them met in the country. And you still talking about how your grandma cooked. And how your granddad built stuff for your grandma. Built a shed for him with his hands. And built a house with his hands. Fixed a car with his hands. I'm saying, we, we, we just. A lot of the main has been taking out these men today. But I digress. I've said too long. My sermon has gone over. But uh, if y'all want to um, put something in the collection plate, y'all see the. Y'all hit me on that cash app if you want to put something in my collection plate. Hit me on the cash app. It's on here. Dollar sign Rico the Opinionist. O P I N I O N I S T. So if y'all y'all appreciate if y'all appreciate this sermon, oh glory, hallelujah. Give my cat pass the collection plate around. Nothing too small and surly, nothing too large, amen. So uh I'm gonna go ahead and y'all enjoy the rest of your Memorial Day weekend. I might call at y'all tomorrow. I may or may not barbecue, probably put something in the oven, you hear me? But uh, anyway, when I hang up, Mary Max call me good. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day. We'll talk later. Peace.